we also have some, some additional functions available. And let's go from left to the right, from top to bottom, and quickly take a look. So what we have is, on the one hand side, a tick filter. This means we can actually filter incoming data, and pr incoming price information, if there's a certain value uh, breached. We can get some statistics for the local database. So we see we have um, this many connections to the internet so far, and uh, we have 9,000 quotes in the intranet database. And if you want to count how many quotes we have in the end of the database, we can click on the Count Quotes button, and it will do a full scan, and it's 64,000 quotes right now in the local database. And we have four catalogs, and the size of the database is 8 megabytes. Now, moving on to the data menu, what we skipped on so far is the automatic update section. So here we can define if and if yes, how often data should be downloaded from the internet or from any other data source. So this applies to any data source, which will write something into the local database. So we can update every number of minutes or seconds. And we can also set up a timetable. So we can define that only on certain days there should be updates and only between certain times. Easy like that. Now there are some more options here which will be discussed in a separate chapter, like the import and the export. Let's move on to tools. We have the securities administration, we just saw this, we have the script development. This will be discussed later on in the Fibber Trader. And then we have monitors. So with monitors we can we can get some insights in what is actually happening in the background. So we have the history assistant, we saw this. It will show us what it's currently downloading, if there are any errors in the downloading process, so we can re-trigger it, retry all, and then we will just enter it into the queue again and we'll re-download it. Or we can stop updates for certain symbols. The next monitor is a task monitor. We will see example where we when we choose to update data, it will first update the data. We have a little progress monitor here, then it will import the data and then we'll do some historical download. And there can be some long-running tasks, and you can select them here and cancel them and uh, get rid of those long-running tasks. Then we have the ability to optimize our database. This is quite an important step from time to time, because if you have a lot of additions and deletions in the database, it will kind of fragment like a hard disk when it's not a solid state hard drive. So optimizing the database can bring some serious speed improvements as well as space reductions. So let's see. We could uh, optimize the database and um, it will tell you afterwards how much memory was saved. You should, uh, you should shut down all the other programs accessing the database. So you should close the Fibber Trader and then you can optimize the database. You can deselect this option to have the main database and the data database updated and optimized. So do this from time to time or even do it automatically at Fibber Trader Startup. So this is what this magic option here, when you go to the Fibber Trader Preferences General means at Startup do a database optimization. This is exactly what it does. So when you start a Fibber Trader, it might take up to a minute or depending on your database, but usually only two or three seconds to restructure the whole database. And this will ensure it's fast and um, there are no integrity problems. And finally, you have down here in the tool section user-defined menu commands. When you look at those, you can add new items, so you can either have a script attached. A script is an internal um, script from the Fibber Trader or Quoteman, or you can have a, a program attached or a website. So let's say we 
we have some bookmarks here. It's called Google. Google.com. We select OK. Then we have our Google menu command in here, and it will appear down here. So we see there's Google. We click on it, and it will open Google in our web browser. The same is possible for the for programs. If we want to start them with some certain parameters. So this is just a very quick shortcut. was requested by some users, and it's used quite intensively if you have the use case for it. If you don't, it doesn't um, clutter your interface. And in the help section, you finally have some help topics, some info about the version, and that's basically it.